of old familiar faces. Jonathan and Ed are here to bring their wisdom to bear on the opening weekend of the new and improved Celtic League. First impressions? Yeah, good and bad, actually. Um, you know, it started well on Friday um, for some teams. Uh, yesterday was game wasn't uh, the greatest, but um, mm. yeah, enthusiastic and uh, hopeful for the season. Ed? I couldn't believe on Friday, opening the Western Mail, that there was still a major squabble going on. Leighton Samuel criticising Pontypridd. I mean, sometimes we just have to decide we're going with it, come what may. And the signs are good. Good. Well, we're going with it as well. And uh, as well as the Celtic League, today's menu also includes a few other tasty bits on the side. Here's what's coming up. I'd given up uh, hope, really, halfway through the summer because I know that I wasn't going to get involved uh, in the Autumn Internationals. Um, I wasn't involved in the training sessions, so, you know, as far as I was concerned, my World Cup was over. Really naffed off. Um, you've got to be, because it's, it's something that every player wants. I was involved with the last uh, World Cup. This, you know, I would love to be involved in this World Cup. And um, I'm only 28, it would be nice to have thought maybe I could have made three World Cups. Is it true that yesterday's referee was on your backroom staff as well? <laughs> <laughs> it did seem like it. <laughs> and as it's a new season, new teams, new tournament, we've got a new face for you to use and abuse. It's Rick O'Shea who'll be answering all your emails and texts. Thank you, Graham. Well, it's been another busy week in Welsh rugby. Mr Moffat's meteor has finally impacted on our rugby landscape, but will it lead to the extinction of the dinosaurs, or are we still looking wistfully over our shoulders in the general direction of the good old days? And what of the World Cup squad? Are we happy? Are we sad? Do we care? Well, we do, and we want to hear from you. Post your messages on the website www.bbc.co.uk scrum5 or text us on 0786 2012 12. And we'll feature the pick of the bunch later in the programme. Graham. Thanks, Rick. OK, let's start with some action. The place where the brave new world was born on Friday night. The Knoll was the venue, Ulster were the visitors, and the Neath Swansea Ospreys were hoping to sink their claws into some Irish flesh. Crowds are arriving, that's what they want to see. That's a lovely ball from James Bate Paul James crashes into Scott Young. Back it comes, Sunith Connor. Good pass out to James Storey. One-handed, tries to slip the ball back inside, and Connor comes on the loop, steps for the line. Can't quite get his pass in to Richie Pugh, who just fumbled it over the try line. Oh, that would have been a great opening score for the Ospreys. Neil Doak. With a clearance kick in the end, relieves the pressure. A quick ball, and Richie Pugh almost got his name on the score sheet. This is the end of the movement. Hits the floor, doesn't panic. Very, very good play there. You know, first of all by the forwards, and then Story just cuts through. Roger Wilson, in his first season for us, does trying to relieve the pressure at the base of that scrum. But again, the kick was... Let's on a little bit hurried run! and infield and it gives the Ospreys the attacking opportunity. Connor though isolated, not a single man outside him when he had to take that tackle. Gibbs straight running, lovely pass as well to Dave Tuetti. Tuetti for the try line and the first try by the Regions comes to the Ospreys and comes to Dave Tuetti but it's the old head Scott Gibbs back at the null who sets it up. Well, this is all about the pass. Watch this pass. Runs at the second row, gets on the outside shoulder. Number seven, Andy Ward, is sucked in. Andy Williams. Connor. Good pass to Savali from Story again. And Savali cuts back inside. Looked to have Cunningham beat, but Shane Stewart crashed him down. Still, the ball is there for Sean Connor, sensibly. Turns away from the touchline. Gibbs. Story. But turnover ball. For Austin. Now, can they use it this time? 
Cunningham is up from fullback. That's Shane Stewart who put that important tackle in. Gets his chance in attack. First action there is down. Uh, Your first Ulster action who failed is to stay down. on their feet. And they give the penalty away. Oh, an interception by Ryan Constable. Number eight, Roger Wilson is there as well. Young, there's a huge overlap going left. Oh, lucky bounce into the hands of Frost, which means it's still on. Good turn of pace in the second row. Support from Stewart. Stewart for the corner, and oh, Shane yes. Stewart gets over. Superb finishing by Ulster. What a breakaway try that was. Larry <laughs> Longwell, the front, and then he puts them off, but James Bate at the tail is secure for Neath. Try and get a drive on. Connor, good dummy, and he's through the gap. That's a great burst by Connor. A story outside in Pew inside. Richie Pew is very quick as an open side. Now then, can they develop this? Bonner Evans tries to shimmy inside his man. Ulster were offside, Neath have an advantage at the moment. Tuetti heads for the gap, Connor again follows well. Andy Williams to Barry Williams. Crashes into his man and offloads. Luke Tate there as well, into the Ulster 22. Williams, straight out the story. The show and goal from Story, but it's Ward's tackle that stopped him. He was halfway through, but that was an important tackle from the Ulster captain, Andy Ward. Lovely play by Paddy Wallace as well. Okay. And good support play. Cunningham is up there. Not in the side. Advantage. I thought Advantage. Ryan Constable went the wrong way there. But now they've got numbers. They must score. Stewart. McCormack. Ward. McCormack got in the way of his winger. Scott Young. Now he has it. Has that given the Leaf defence time to get back? Doak, the long pass to Wallace. Lovely pass to Tyrone Howe. Howe brushes past the fast tackle, gets the pass into Stewart, and Ronan McCormack was absolutely determined to get his hands on the ball, and he's the one who crashes over for Ulster's second try. Connor Evans crosses the game line that time, and the gap appears for Andy Williams. Williams over halfway on the 10 metre line. He's got it all on his own. A cross comes the defence, Cunningham with a tackle. And Cunningham regathers as well and sets off on a run himself. Cunningham now looks for support and gets it from Ward. Ward with a huge run in. Andy Ward into the 22. He'll score. And he will not be caught. What a superb breakout by Alston and by Andy Ward. Barry Williams. Nice pass to Andy Williams. Williams picks up pace again. Try to get it into Sean Connor. But it's still on. It was great work on the floor, which gets the gap for Durston. And Adrian Durston gets over. First ten minutes of the second half, not just safely negotiated by the Ospreys, they've added ten points in that ten-minute period. Still, Wallace not finding his mark. Durston, oh, great step, and again, support comes from Sevayali, and the Ospreys rampant at the moment. Durston. Again, we're going to get that big sidestep in action. Again, centres, Andy, centres, same goal. And another offside call against Ulster. That's Henson wearing 17, replacing Sean Connor. Williams 
Hansen. He's a little dark. First time out. Story. Twetty did well. Standing start. Barry Williams steps it back to Luke Tate. Good cleared ball for Andy Williams. Henson. A lot of traffic running around him. Savayali outside his man. Savayali keeps it alive before he's bundled out in the corner. So it's still on for the Ospreys. Up to the try line they go. And that is a try. It's maybe we'll see who scores here, isn't it? It's Gavin it Henson, I think. It's Gavin Henson who has got over with some help from Adam Jones. Up towards the 22, here comes Henson. Henson waits and puts Tuetti in the hole. Tuetti for the corner. Not quite. The defence just got across in time. But still, the pressure is on the Ulster try line. Williams has to dig. Henson pops up at scrum half that time. Durston. Huge pass out to the midfield to Andy Newman, but the referee was playing an advantage anyway. The Ospreys trying to drive the way over. Donald Evans tries to slip it back. Right up in the corner, Andy Williams to Henson. Dummies tries to bang his way over, just held up. It's there again for the Ospreys to use. Andy Williams. He can't make it, Adam Jones. He's fought, brought down short as well. Paul James tries to step over everybody, has to lay it back. Williams, the short pass again, gives to Henson. Henson has another crack at it. And Gavin Henson gets his second try. And a try that gets the Ospreys off to a dream start. Whilst they didn't pose any threats, we gifted them 21 points. I wasn't really duly really concerned at half time, though we were down by a number of points. Uh, we came back, we were more direct second half, and we took our opportunities uh, like we didn't in the first. Uh, you know, very pleased. Uh, it's, a, it's a winning start, it's a positive, and a, and a well deserved victory. Ed, good start, as Lynn says, for the Ospreys. Do you think, on their own, Swansea or Neath would have been able to go on and win that game in the last 20 minutes or so? Uh, don't, no, don't care. <laughs> or, really don't. I think it's all about the Ospreys now, isn't it? Mm. And uh, they showed good character, and I think they, they showed it by not panicking, by having faith in, in people coming off the bench and, uh, and re re retaining patience and invention. I think you'll always get invention with the Lynn Jones side. Uh, I'm not so sure about the patience, but they certainly had it on Friday night. Mm, that depth Ed talks about, Jonathan, was there on the bench and, and well used. Well, hopefully that's what uh, will happen with these uh, new uh, regional sides because, you know, the, the, the bench will be strengthened. I think the impact of, especially Henson and uh, Gavin Thomas on the, on the week, uh, we, uh, weekend was superb because, you know, they needed also just hanging on in there and they needed a little bit of a push. And he loves coming on in this situation. And the two of them did change. Gavin Thomas just, you know, carried the ball well, got over the advantage line, just added a bit of thrust to them. And all of a sudden, you know, he watches as the ball comes out, goes in again with Barry Williams. As the ball comes out, it comes to Henson this time. And he's, he's a different player in the corner. And this is a lovely pass. Watch, he just drifts across, spots the front row forward, Twetty goes through and nearly scores. And, he, you know, he scores two tries you know, to, to win the game. The first try he scored after being on the field for um, a minute and 12 seconds, I think. So, you know, that will that'll be a great plus for, you know, for these uh, sides. And because if they have to make it a replacement for injury or just for impact, they will be strengthened because there's far less uh, sides. Mm -hmm. Some of the angles that Neath yeah, ran I, last night I were, thought, were impressive. You know, yeah, I think it's been difficult to gel all these uh, players together in a short space of time. But I thought it, it, it worked very well. And I thought the first example we're going to show is, you know, first it's Gibbs and Tweety, one from Swansea, one from Neath. And what he does, he runs at the second row first and drags best in. And then Tweety is just going to hit the hole on the outside. And they've done a lot of this. You know, as, the, as it goes forward, bang, great angle. 
Hooker again is caught in the defensive line, and that's what you've got to do is run it forwards and commit them because they are, you know, a bit worried about the pace of the backs against them. And again, what's the shot? The run goes in, bang. It's it's like the French play. They hit on the shoulder, running into angles. And again, right towards the end, opportunity gives he sees who's there, sucks Constable in, and they're away. So everything was positive about them. The only thing that wasn't positive was what Lynn Jones said in his in his interview. Mm. They gifted three tries to, to Ulster and against far better opposition, you won't come back for it. And look at this position now. They shuffle bad ball out, the ball comes out, Gibbs has got to make the tackle, so he's caught out. And you've got the centre on the wing there, defending no one. That's lazy, lazy play on the on the, the wrong side and the short side. The ball comes out, Gibbsy isn't there, no one's gone in, 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 instead of him. And they score a try from an attacking scrum in the opposition 22. And again, they're in a good field position, this time it's Ulster ball. Scrum half's going to go out there and push the defence, OK? That's what he should do. But watch him, as he's caught in there, Wallace is going to come to the blind side. Well, Con uh, Connor should follow him. What would happen as it comes on? He's caught in the scrum half. Wallace comes round. Connor stays where he is. He's made it four to two. Connor hasn't reacted, and they're straight through. The damage is done. They get behind the, the defensive line. Connor makes a tackle there, but from this ruck, it goes across and they score. And again, it's a lovely break by, by Williams. Cunningham comes across. I thought that was a penalty, but he gets the ball when he's on the floor. Steals it, and as he goes on that arc, the Neath players don't react to it, and they go in the wrong direction. All of a sudden, they're off balance. He comes away, and you've got to look at how disorganised they are. It's a lovely little switch. But this is a blindside flanker running 60 yards to score. They haven't switched on in an attacking position, and I think that was the only downside of it. It kept Ulster in the game, and they should have been dead and buried. Did you say Neath players? I said Ospreys, did I? <laughs> he, he said Neath once or twice Swansea. on Friday. I didn't night. have time to say Neath and Swansea um, Ospreys. Scott I thought Gibbs, he did well. Should he have caught him there? That, that run into the line. Um, he looked a bit, uh, a bit slow. The old geese is allowed to sit in his armchair <laughs> for now and again. But I think Take it got, easy. Yeah, what you got to look at? It's just where the position where they were. You know, it was a good, good move, but. They were all in attack, but they've got to switch on. If they do lose the ball, they've got to switch on very, very quickly, you know, and, and, and realise because they're in the opposition 22, teams are going to be are capable of scoring against them, and uh, it would have been a far more comfortable result. And I don't think Lynn uh, Jones has been too worried at half time, but um, against better opposition, they need to, you know, just sort those things out. But I was very impressed with the, with the Ospreys. Good, good start. Well remembered. Uh, one new region then accounted for. Four more to go. The Cardiff 